This is the Fujifilm 150 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 8 telephoto zoom lens and I've been wanting to use this for quite a while so I brought this here to Namibia and Cape Town where I am now to put it through its test for some landscape and wildlife photography. Now the attraction of a lens like this is its incredible reach, 150 to 600 millimeters in full frame terms that works out at something like 220 to about 914 millimeters, which is a fair bit longer than the 100-400, which was previously the longest telephoto zoom you could get for the Fuji APS-C system. Now you can see the difference here at 150, 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600 millimeters. It has the capacity to really pull distant things much, much closer, which makes this a fantastic lens for shooting wildlife, but also for shooting some of the kind of landscapes that I see here in Namibia and landscape abstracts and things like that. Now what this lens isn't is super fast. The widest aperture at 150 millimeters is f5.6 and going up through to 600 millimeters, your widest aperture is f8. So it's not great at letting light in, which means if you're using it in low light conditions, for example, if you're using it in a rainforest under the canopy, or if you're shooting indoor in a concert venue, then you're probably gonna to have to really increase the ISO to get fast enough shutter speeds. However, for what I'm doing here in Namibia, where we've got bright, bright sunny conditions, where we're not really struggling with low light conditions, then it's absolutely perfect. It's not really been that much of a hindrance for me. And with most cameras' ability nowadays to go way past ISO 1000 and still have excellent quality, it's not really been that much of a drawback, but it is something to have in mind. But what this focal length does give you is an incredible amount of options. Now I was in Namibia last year and I brought my GFX system, which doesn't really have anything particularly long. There's not really any long lenses for that. So for so many of the images that I was shooting here, I had to really, really crop in and just lose so much of the resolution that the camera was capable of giving. So this year I decided to bring this lens and it's just been incredible being able to really punch into the scene and really frame the scene without the need to crop. And it's really great for abstracts. You can really just pick out small parts of a scene, really zoom in and just create these incredible abstracts, these incredible intimate landscapes that really, really work in a place like this, where there are so many opportunities for just simple, clean, balanced landscape images. Now this is one of Fuji's red badge lenses, so you really would expect premium quality construction and it really does feel like a very well made lens. I've been using it in Namibia where we had some horrific conditions, just sand, sand blowing everywhere where you really need the weather sealing and then again here in Cape Town we were shooting the other night, sand was blowing, spray was blowing off the sea, there was lots of water in the air. And it's just never given me any problems whatsoever. I've been using it lots in the sand and I can't hear any sand whatsoever in any of the zooms. It don't, I don't have that kind of like pepper, pepper shaker grinding feel that you can sometimes get when you've been using zooms and you've been blasted by sand. So the construction is really, really nice. It is a pretty heavy and big lens at 1.6 kilograms. It's got a fair bit of weight to it. But for this kind of focal length, that's really not particularly unusual. In fact, most lenses with this kind of range would probably usually weigh a little bit more. It is also a big lens. It's quite long. I can barely fit this in the ICU in my backpack. So if you're taking this lens, you're obviously going to have to think about the other stuff that you're taking with you because your, your backpack can get very bulky and very heavy very quickly. But having said that, I've been carrying this around with me for about three weeks now. It's been in my backpack as I've been walking across sand and done a few hikes. I've not really had that much of a problem with it. For what it gives you, it's generally worth carrying it around. Now, the weight, it does balance quite well. Obviously, it's a very long lens, but you've got a tripod collar here. So when you've got this on a, on a tripod, it does feel very well balanced. All the weight goes right the way down through the center. We've been using this in a lot of wind, and I've not really ever felt that the tripod is particularly unbalanced. And the tripod collar does come off very easily. You just screw it and then click, and it will pop off like that, which means, uh, which makes it a little bit less cumbersome if you want to be doing handheld shooting with it. And it also means that this is just a little bit easier to pack in your bag like this. 
Now, in terms of the controls, there are various buttons on the side of the lens barrel here, all of which are easy to find and operate when you've got your eye against the viewfinder. You've got a focus limiter, which I'll talk about a little bit later. You've got a button to switch between auto aperture and manual aperture, and then you've got a preset button, as well as these focus control buttons all around the lens. All of the rings on the barrels are nice and tactile and easy to use. The aperture ring has got a nice bit of resistance and clicks between each aperture. The zoom ring is really nice and wide. It's very easy to find, very easy to use whether you're operating gloves. And then at the front, you've got the focus ring. Now it's a constant complaint that I have with some of the Fuji lenses is that I think that the focus ring is a little bit loose. I would prefer a little bit more uh, resistance because I do use manual focus a lot. And I find um, when the lens, when the focus ring is really loose, it is a bit harder to be more precise, particularly with a lens with this focal length where focusing, you're focusing across great distances. I would like a little bit more resistance here, but it's not really been that much of a problem. Now, when it comes to autofocus, obviously autofocus in a lens like this is really, really important. I found this to be really quite snappy and really quick. It's much faster than the 100 to 400, which tends to hunt quite a lot when you're using it. This is gonna hunt, it's not always gonna nail it every time, but usually the times when the folk, when it's been struggling to focus and it's, you find that hunting where it's just moving backwards and forwards along the focal range trying to find focus, that's usually happened in really low contrast scenes. Generally, as soon as there's, we've been in a place where there's been contrast, where there's been some hard edges for the autofocus to kind of grab onto, then it's nailed the focus really, really quickly and stuck there when I've been moving the camera around. Now, as I said, it does have a focus limiter button on the side of the barrel here. And what that will do if it's activated is it will limit the focus from five meters and to infinity. So anything that's less than five meters away, the camera won't try to focus on that, which is useful if you're standing around a fence or amongst people or something like that, then if, you, if something actually gets in front of the camera, then the camera isn't gonna to try to focus on it. Without that, the minimum focus distance is 2.4 meters, which is quite a long way away. This isn't a lens that's gonna allow you to get really, really close to wildlife. Um, but again, it's not something that I find particularly a problem. Most of what I'm shooting is considerably further away than that anyway. There's also focus control buttons all around the lens barrel here. Now, what these allow you to do is to focus on a subject, click one of the buttons here, and then the focus will lock on that. So you can move the camera away, focus on something else, but then if you want to go back to the previous subject, you just click the button and the camera will immediately jump back to that focus, which is a little bit quicker and a little bit more trustworthy than to use the autofocus to find focus again. And you can also save that autofocus by pressing the preset button here. And what that means is once that focus is saved, you can turn the camera off and back on again, press that button and it will immediately jump back to the focus distance that it was at previously. Now Fuji are claiming five stops of image stabilization on this lens and on a telephoto lens with this focal length, image stabilization is very important because any shake is gonna be magnified along the focal length, so giving you kind of blurry, shaky images. Now I found the, uh, the image stabilization to be really, really effective on this lens, shooting wildlife, shooting handheld. I've not really had to worry too much about shutter speed and have been able to get really sharp, really clear handheld images. The, uh, the image stabilization can't be turned off and on on the lens. It can only be turned off in the camera. And you can see here, this is the difference uh, with image stabilization turned on. And this is what it would look like with the image stabilization turned off. All right, so let's have a look at the image quality you can expect from this lens. Now, this isn't gonna be particularly technical. I'm only really interested in the kind of images that I can expect from using a lens like this when I'm out shooting in the field. So I'm gonna start with looking at a few images that I've already edited. This one is shot at 364 millimeters at ISO 320 and at F8. So let's just zoom in and have a look. And you can see here that the detail on the plant on the leaves here is really, really nice. And it's just a very, very contrasty lens that really, really pops. Here's another one at 294 millimeters at ISO 1000 and f7.1. Now the reason this is at ISO 1000 is because it's very, very windy when I was shooting this. And even though I was using a tripod, I was very wary of camera shake when using such a long focal length. So let's just zoom in again. And again, you can see it's just, it's a really nice contrasty lens. It, it picks out lots of detail here in the center. Let's have a look at another one. This is shot at, let's say 500 millimeters, 484, ISO 200 and F 7.1. And again, the detail here in these trees, in these branches is 
these trees right at the back here it's really really nice and again when we look up into where the light's hitting the dune how contrasty this is there really is a lot of detail here and it's capable of producing really really nice images now let's just work our way through the focal lengths. These are just test images that haven't been edited at all. You can see these are just the, uh, the raw files. So this is shot at uh, 150, so lens wide open. Again, you can't really see much from this shot. So let's look here at a city shot zooming into 100%. So you can see uh, this is again, nothing's been done to this. It's not been sharpened at all. And there's lots of detail here right up into the corners when we look along the this this crane here the detail here is really quite nice it's not super outstandingly sharp but it's certainly very acceptable let's have a look at 200 millimeters let's first go to the street scene here now uh, i think because of depth of field some of these distant buildings were a little bit out of focus because the focus grabbed here the foreground and you can see here the detail along in these railings here the detail in the leaves and these trees, this fine detail at the back there. And if we look a little bit over here again in these uh, in the in the roof tiles in the aerials here again, this is inside the depth of field. So this is a little bit out of focus. This is another shot of that lighthouse in Cape Town. And again, you can see here that the detail if we zoom in even further to to 800 percent that's a little bit much. Let's have 200 percent. You can see here that there is plenty of detail being rendered. Now the same lighthouse at 300 millimeters. This isn't super sharp. I'm not sure if there's a little bit of camera shake here. I was trying really hard to keep the camera as steady as possible. Again, using a tripod, slightly higher, so it's 640 and one over 400, but it was very, very windy when I was film when I was shooting this. So I don't think that's a brilliant example. Let's have a look at the city scene. And you can see here, this is zoomed into 100% that there is, let's find an area with lots of detail in these air conditioning units. Again, it's not incredibly sharp. It's not sharp like a prime lens, but it is. This is a zoom lens with a very, very long focal range. And it certainly is, as I said before, very, very acceptable there. Now let's go to 400. Again, just got the street scene for this one. I think again, this is out of focus because of the depth of field. So let's look down here where the, where the image is in focus. And I, it's not amazingly sharp. I really did feel that it started to drop off a little bit around the 400 millimeter mark. You can see here this detail, it's a little bit blurry there. It is acceptable. Um, it's not incredibly sharp though. And I would say that the that the bokeh as well, the, the outer focus, that's not particularly pleasant. It's not a not a lens that looks really, really nice in the out of focus areas. Let's go to 500 millimeters. This is the lighthouse here. And you can see again, not incredibly sharp. It, it is dropping off a little bit. The, the performance certainly does drop off a little bit around the 400 millimeter mark. But it's really not bad. It's certainly acceptable. The street scene that I shot there, I uh, couldn't get any, any sharp images because there's just too much camera movement. So let's go straight to the 600. So this is 600 millimeters, the lighthouse. And I think that's fine. When you consider how far away this is, this is 600 millimeters. This lighthouse is a long, long, long way away from where I'm standing. And to be able to get images that sharp is really quite nice. And it's just something that you can't do with any other Fuji lens. So to have it this sharp, this decent, it's, it's, it is really, really acceptable. And again, looking at the street scene, um, not brilliant, not perfect, not absolutely incredible, but certainly uh, acceptable enough for the focal range. I just want to show this image because this is the same scene. This is one that I've worked on a little bit, so it has been sharpened a little bit. And it's just to show that when you work on the image, when you do a little bit of sharpening, work on the clarity a little bit, you can get very, very acceptable images. This is shot at 600 millimeter, ISO 640. Again, a fast shutter speed here, which I think is one of the reasons why I was able to get it uh, so sharp with, with so little amount of shake. So you can see that even at 600 millimeters, it is capable of, of producing really nice images. So I think that's the thing with this lens. It is a good lens. It is sharp. It's not incredibly sharp. Fuji certainly make sharper lenses, things like the 50 to 140 or the 16 to 55. But there is nothing in this focal range that is comparable. I don't have the 100 to 400 to, to compare it with now, but I have used that lens before in the past. And I do believe that this performs better and does give you an advantage of a much longer reach and a much longer focal length. So when you buy this lens, you're not, you're, that's basically what you're going to be buying it for. You're going to be buying it for that reach, what it can do, how, how it can pull very distant scenes much closer to you. And it is acceptably sharp. 
sharp. It just, there is a little bit of a drop off after 400 millimeters. So I've been really impressed with this lens and I've really enjoyed using it. It's given me so many opportunities and so many options for images, for landscape images, for wildlife images that I just wasn't able to get when I was here last year without this kind of focal length. It does have the limitations of not being a super fast lens, but to be honest, I've not really found that to, to limit me in any way. Most camera ISOs are so good now, so I've just been able to, when I've really needed to shoot super fast handheld, I've just been able to increase the ISO to 1000 and still get really good looking images. For sure, it's a big lens and it is quite heavy. And this focal length of 150 to 600, it is more limited than a more conventional zoom, something like the 70 to 300 or the 55 to 200. But the options this lens gives you really are incredible for certain trips or for certain kinds of people who really need a lot of reach. So for wildlife shooters, for people who are shooting action, then this is an absolutely excellent lens. And to be honest, I'm almost certainly gonna be buying one of these when I get back home. Home to Lisbon. Now that's pretty much it for this review. I hope it's been useful and I hope it's been interesting. If you've got any questions, drop me an email or drop me a comment down below and I will get back to you. If you have found the video interesting, please drop me a like and subscribe to the channel for more Fuji related content and more stuff on landscapes. It really does help me support the channel. And if you enjoy my photography, if you enjoy the way that I shoot, I'd love to have you join me here on a workshop. I'm coming back to Namibia next year and we're already making plans for 2025 and I've got trips all over the world to places like Patagonia, to Greenland, to the Dolomites, to Iceland. You can find information on all my trips on my website. So please check that out. And if you've got any questions, just drop me a line. So as ever, thanks for watching and good luck with all your photography. I'll see you next time. Take care.